All right, well, I'm recording it, so I'm going to post it to YouTube afterwards anyway, so I guess we should just get started as people roll in here, see what's going on. Yeah, you know, it's all the same stuff, right? We'll talk about the same stuff a couple of times. Right, so we've got John in here and me, Ryan, and everybody is freaking out because of what we just saw happen with Fair Moon. And what did happen with Fair Moon? Uh, so basically, it's a. It's what a, happened is that what, what you've been warning us was uh, inevitably going to happen happened. Right. Yeah. So basically, what happened is the original Fair Moon contract uh, was a Safe Moon clone, and what happened with that is they changed the total number of tokens that uh, are required for the threshold to dump the tokens into the liquidity pool, and they did the when they changed the sorry <laughs> reboot. <laughs> <laughs> i'll get better at these guys i swear <laughs> um, a lot of information in your brain bro slow down he's trying to come out slow down and get it all out just slow down and get it all out okay be all right yes so basically instead of having one quadrillion tokens uh their total contract had uh i believe it was five billion uh yeah five billion but they did not change the threshold for when those tokens actually dump and what that did is it created a situation where one of those dumps would have caused half the value to instantly go away. And Okay, and so before you go on, let's compare that to what the other tokens are doing, right? So you say they didn't set a threshold when they were actually going to dump, whereas most of these other tokens, Safe Moon, Fair Safe, you know, whatever the hell their names are, they set a threshold of 500 million or 500,000 well, or whatever it right, is, the, right? The default Safe Moon threshold is uh, 500 billion tokens in the contract when it initiates the dump. Uh, Fair Moon did not change that on the original Fair Moon, so as a result, it would have dumped about half the value um, from the liquidity pool when it did it. So they had to migrate into a new uh, token. They called it Fair for the symbol, but Fair Moon uh, still for the full name. Um, and this one was actually handled by War on Rugs, uh, you know, the infamous anti-rug pulling people that I've been uh, warning about for weeks. We've been tweeting about Fair and Fair Moon for weeks. But that was a messy messy swap when they went to the V2 because I had some. And the value of it went to like basically nothing. I think I started with $1,000. It was like 100 something after I swapped to the V2. And then, you know, it, it came up a little bit in price, which was good. Uh, but, you know, the uh, it still existed in a way that could be rug pulled. And so War on Rugs actually pulled the biggest rug of any rug that's ever been pulled. Yeah, I mean, it's a, they, uh, yeah, used they, car dealer situation, right? When the used car dealer keeps telling you he's not a liar, he's not a liar, he's going to shoot straight with you, and he's a good guy, that probably means he's trying to screw you over. Yeah, this was one transaction here that basically destroyed this thing. Uh, that price is in B and B. Let me switch over to the other one here. Got a thousand tabs open. Starting U.S. dollars. BNB is a good number to compare things to, since it uh, you know accounts for fluctuations in BNB. Yeah, but so basically they went today from a price of 0.6 cents, just about 0.6, all the way down to 0.1, and this was from a single transaction. And uh, then they deleted their Twitter right afterwards and you know who knows uh what we will ever hear from them again sounds like they're gone uh blacklift just asked which what are we talking about we're talking about the fair moon uh war on rugs uh token fair token right we're talking about fair moon and the fact that war on rugs rug pulled uh fair moon today and how do we know that it was the developer's wallet that handled that um well basically you can look and see on the uh, blockchain explorers who actually created the contract code. And then by looking through the transactions, you can see that, okay, this address created the contract code, and then this address frequently interacts within you know, 30 seconds to a minute with these other, with these other uh, wallet addresses. So you're kind of able to figure that, okay, this person just sent something into this address because this is an unknown, unpub unpublished address, and then it continued on to this point, and then this point, and down the line. So this is one of the intermediary addresses uh, that was actually holding these tokens when 
they were so they were swapped into the uh, pool. So it doesn't actually pop up on the blockchain explorers as the deployer of the contract, but that's just one transaction away from it, and you can clearly see where things are going. Yeah, it's. Uh, and so is this like um, uh, we get the question a lot? How do you know when these other and not necessarily a full rug pull, but right, but the lopsided liquidity dumps and the, the LP token pulls. People always ask, how do you know that that's going to a dev wallet? How do you know that? Is this that same thing? Uh, so how do we know? Well, we know because the contract has hard coded in it the threshold for these dumps and we can monitor the token balance of the contract. And we know that when the token balance hits this threshold and if the uh, swap and liquify function is turned on, then it will absolutely dump the tokens to the liquidity pool. So we're able to know exactly when it's about to happen, uh, building up to it, you know, the moment it's, it's happening, and then we're able to calculate the exact drop in price it's going to cause because we know exactly how many additional tokens are being added to the liquidity pool. Yeah, and you watch the wallets, right? And so you know where it's going. Right, yeah. Yeah, so another one, uh, I mean, I don't know, maybe he was feeling some heat and people were starting to give him some crap on different things. Whoever he is, I don't know if anyone actually knows who he is, but yeah. Yeah, hopefully nobody knows who he is, right? I mean, if he was planning yeah. on doing this the whole time, uh, you would hope he kept his identity secret because this was obviously the intention the entire time, right? It was right. always set up to do this. Right, yeah. But I don't know, if, if whoever is in charge of that is out there and wants to have a conversation, uh, I would love to, that'd be great, but I doubt that would happen. But, you know, I don't think I he's going to be having many conversations with anybody for a while. I mean, I don't know. I don't know his own life and what's going on, but it didn't seem like a, ni a nice thing to do to everybody. That was maybe he wants to uh, maybe he wants to uh, maybe he's an asshole and he wants to hop on a uh, on a call from a VPN from Malaysia, wherever he moved to and gloat and rub it in everybody's faces. And we would be happy to host that. <laughs> Uh, we're asking how much money was pulled. What was it like? Uh, uh, it was uh, fifteen hundred BNB. Uh, it was a little over thirteen hundred BNB, and it came to I think it was like five hundred and thirty thousand dollars about. And then they left. Uh, what's back in the pool right now? This is the live chart here. There's two hundred seventy eight in the pool right now. So yeah, quite a substantial amount. You know, compared to uh, what was in there. Yeah, so that's like six hundred grand or so. Yeah, a little, little under that. Yeah, well, right now, now probably a little bit more than a little bit under that, but uh, right, yeah, B and B has gone all over the place today. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's that's kind of the high level overview of that deal. Um, let me see if we got any questions in this chat here. Yeah. Uh, about this yeah. stuff. Yeah, why leave the two hundred? That's a good point, Inferno. Um, I, you know, I didn't look and see if they have any other balances left in the wallets that are uh, connected, but you know, that could be the case is that that was all they had and they put it all in one and then did it. But I, I actually haven't looked exactly into it, but yeah, that's probably what it is. Well, yeah. Interesting. Or maybe just leave a little bit to hope that there's a price spike and then do it one more time. Maybe. I don't know. Right. People people buy a dip or something. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty big dip though. I mean, it was clearly uh, and then deleting your Twitter account right afterwards. That's, you know, if this was an accident <laughs> or done by somebody else, that, somebody that just wouldn't said, happen. Uh, somebody just said two hundred uh, was left for charity. I guess. Yeah, it's just for <laughs> everyone else to cash out the tokens that they still have of it if they do have any. Yeah. Uh, somebody says. Sam says. I hear a lot about in permanent loss. When hearing about providing liquidity, will people worry about that when providing liquidity for not safe moon dashboard? That's a, that's a valid question. It is a valid question, and I can answer it. Um, let me pull up. There's actually a chart because I love those things that explains it very well. Right. This is why it takes <laughs> him an hour. This is why it takes him an hour to get ready for anything because he needs to pull up every piece of potential information that's going to be needed to back up and answer any question anybody asks. Yes, so. because I don't want I don't want to say something that's not true, and I don't want that's, that's not the point of any of this. The point of all of this is not to attack anybody. The point of all of this is to take something extremely complicated and try and turn it into something that people can understand so that they don't throw all their money everywhere, get taken advantage of, and, yeah. you know, it's, get, it's getting better and better and uh, as far as, you know, getting the messages out there. 
that I feel like we need to get out there. You're but, you're you're just a data delivery system. That's what the dashboard is, and that's what you are. I'm working data on it. Data delivery. I'm working on it. Um, yeah. Oh, I just minimize every. So yeah, in permanent loss. <laughs> uh, yes, in permanent loss. Let me uh, let me pull that up real quick. There is. I can show you exactly what will happen uh, in regards to a permanent loss. Which that is just one of the things with liquidity pool. If there's major changes in price in either direction, up or down, there is some permanent loss from it. Yeah, and so like if anybody doesn't know, um, and permanent loss is just when you, you know, provide liquidity to a liquidity pool, right? You put your tokens in BNB and not safe for instance. Right. And then, and then the, price, the price of the, right, go ahead. So I was going to say, so yeah, basically if the price changes and shifts in a substantial way, then you, when you put your LP tokens back in and you get your original liquidity out, you're still getting an amount that creates the same output constant product um, of equal value tokens in there. So, um, let me see. Here's the, here's the uh, image of it. Leave that on the screen. So this would be uh, what live stream number two. So I'm doing a little better than last time, but we're still still going. <laughs> so this looks somebody's his... called you Charles Hoskinson. I have no I idea. I don't know what that, that means is. at all. I need to go. I need to Google that. I'm gonna Google that while you talk. Hold on. Charles Hoskinson uh -oh. is the founder of uh, Cardano. Cardano, uh, you know, that token. Um, yeah, I'm not, you know, unfortunately, I'm not, I do not know him. Uh, I am not him. You have <laughs> less hair than him. Ah. Otherwise, you look like him, though. I can see it. If you were, if you were a, a ginger with lots of hair. All right, here is impermanent loss. Yeah, so basically, with impermanent loss, this is the price curve. If the price stays at 100% of what it was and there's no fluctuation in price between when you put it in there and when you take it out, then you get out the exact same amount. But it works in both ways if there's large shifts in price. So basically, if, it, if the price 5Xs, then you will be ending up, uh, you're receiving 25% 20, less than what you had put in. And that, so that's that's if the price of not safe moon, for instance, five X is versus the price of B and B. Right. Or vice versa. If you right. know, if it yep. goes to one fifth of the price, um, then same thing because the curve. Works. Right. So same wild fluctuations curve. either way. What you want is 10 percent rise or flat or whatever in both. <clears throat> um, right. Which. That's just how the liquidity pools work. And, you know. It's not, it's not a substantial amount because we're not going to be requiring a substantial amount of liquidity be put in to access uh, the higher levels of the dashboard. You will, you will need to get some. And unfortunately, if the price 5X is, then your main holdings 5X, the, the bit that you put into the liquidity pool, it is going to decrease in value a little bit, um, you know, based off of this curve that continues down. So, and that's, you know, that goes true for any liquidity pool just because of how they operate. Okay, right. So that you saw on your on your y axis here, you have the change. Oh, don't bring that back up for me. Yeah, so basically the the change of price. So this right here at the top, uh, I don't know if you can see my mouse, you probably can't. Um, but the 0% uh, row at the very top, the first row over where it says 100% at the very top of the green line, that is basically your starting point. And then if the price changes and it doubles, goes over to the next line, then it's roughly like, uh, what is that, like 11% or so, whatever that would be right there, uh, that you would lose in overall total combined value. So if you had put in $100 worth and it doubles, then your liquidity pool tokens would only be able to retrieve uh, the value about $89 worth. So uh, so that, that's how impermanent loss works. And, yeah, that is just a side effect of liquidity pools and adding liquidity to them.
but you're not putting all of your uh, tokens into there. You know, it's just a, a small portion to help build things up. And, and there's upsides to it too, right? It's not all it's not all risk, right? There are rewards right. to uh, staking. So you you do get a fee back uh, from trades that happen with the pool. Now, though, with the reward type tokens, which this one does give you a reward, you're not going to get them while they're in there because you're not actually holding them. And we have excluded the liquidity pool from the rewards. And the reason that we did that is so that uh, it doesn't affect the price and cancel out the rewards everybody else is getting. Because if the liquidity pool was getting a reward and the reward is the same amount that you're getting, then it's effectively canceling out the reward that you're getting. So that's something that's happening across the board with all these other ones uh, that we remove from, from the contract code. So you're still mm -hmm. receiving the rewards on all your main tokens that you're holding. Uh, but Right, and that's just because you put more. So if you give rewards to the liquidity pool, you're just dumping more of that native token into the liquidity pool and not putting any more BNB. &B. And as we've talked about before, that uh, just brings down the value of the total token since it's just the ratio of your token versus BNB &B in that liquidity pool. So if you're not funding it with BNB &B as well, you're sure you're giving rewards, but you're canceling out the value of those rewards with that liquidity pool addition. Right. Well said. Yep. And there are, we are going to do, uh, there are benefits to uh, staking liquidity with the dashboard as well. Uh, we got, we got good stuff planned. So it's, uh, there are going to be upsides. Yeah. Yeah. It's exciting things. Let me look in the um, chat here and see if we got anything. Yeah. There's a bunch of stuff coming in. Um, let's see. Yeah. Someone just said, uh, can't wait. Uh, their advice to safe moon holders, which, you know, as people say, this is not financial advice, blah, 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 do your own research. Uh, which, I mean, that's, I'm doing research for people because it's confusing, but, you know, you st should still definitely do your own. And uh, I guess, I guess people say that, is it like a legal thing that it's not financial advice? I don't know if it's like a joke meme or like a real thing i hear people say it all the time but i know i feel like it's like a like a meme though that okay you, they just say because like what did you get to sue some random person on the internet because you invested in tesla and lost some money like it's not you know what are you right. gonna do yeah and i'm not telling anybody to buy this stuff i'm just trying to show some tools and uh you know if it goes up then we would all make some and vice versa yeah yeah you know yeah, so someone just asked, if BNB crashes down to $100, what would happen to the price of not SafeMoon? Uh, so basically, that would cut it out to, what, that, that's about a fifth of where it's at right now. And since it's the only thing it's paired with right now, it would drop it to about a fifth. Uh, so something that we were thinking of doing with uh, some of the marketing uh, wallet is to create another pair with something, uh, which, you know, would be a... It would start off as a, a really weak pool, but it would it would pair with another token that's not BNB, and then basically, would you know we have we haven't gone too far into that, but once once it's paired with other tokens or multiple tokens, or when we look into public exchanges, there's a lot more uh, security in the price because it's paired with multiple tokens. So right now the value is pegged 100% to BNB. BNB cuts in half the price of this uh, in reference to US dollars would also cut in half. So that's why we're seeing across the board right now, all of these tokens starting to go down uh, today and yesterday. It's because BNB's price has dropped, uh, what, like 20% or so. But if BNB did drop to $100, but say the, uh, the dollar index dropped to 15 from the 90 it's at right now you would actually increase your value in not safe moon even if bnb tanked that hard so it's all relative to whatever it's pegged to right bnb is to the dollar not safe moons to bnb and ultimately we're all pricing it back to the dollar so it's a two-way exchange right it's dependent on bnb to usd and it's dependent on you know not safe moon to bnb right yeah. What, what else do we got here? Hi, I'm Ryan, and this is not financial advice, says somebody in the chat. <laughs> uh, Hi, I'm Ryan, and don't listen to anything I say. 
Uh, here we go. I have a question. Why would they include it in the contract if it devalues the price? I really don't understand. Uh, well, I spoke with them when I figured this out, and it was apparent that they don't really understand either. So when I explained to the SafeMoon's developer, Papa, what was going on, he said, oh, this is the weirdest thing. I need to look into this. No one has brought this up. And he looked into it, and he came back and said, oh, we decided that it's a feature. So that, that's when I started really doing some deep analysis of it because it was clear that there are a lot of people that don't understand how this works, including the people that are selling it to you. Uh, they just don't clearly understand it. Yeah, so someone asked a question about exchanges. We, we haven't can looked... We see, can we see those Papa Chats? Are we allowed to see those Papa Chats? I think we'd love to see uh, them. Well, I was blocked from Discord by him, so I can't get into... Uh, anything that had to do with discord with him anymore i took some screenshots um before though i've got somewhere i think i think that would be fun yeah i didn't get all of them but yeah let me, uh... yeah i kind of agree with Ch chicaron chacaron what's that chacaron let's call him chacaron i agree with chacaron i think they're playing dumb i think they must understand at least at some point they must be playing dumb right well by now they absolutely understand 100% they understand it. I don't know if they understood at first, but by now, yeah, I mean, they've got they've got money and lawyers and all the things, so right. somebody and has got to have told them by them now. They're, they're making money off of it, right? Right. So, yeah. Oh, and, you know, everyone's talking about these, the Surtec uh, thing with SafeMoon and how well it went, but nobody's talking about a major flaw that is in all these MoonCoin contracts as well about revoked ownership. And... Um, Surtech did discover that there is a very specific set of functions that you can do in a very specific way that allows you to regain ownership of the contract after it's been revoked. Uh, and this is, a, this is a major thing. So basically, if you uh, lock the contract, which makes it so that nobody can touch it, and that's like a time-related uh, thing where it waits for a certain number of blocks to go by, uh, on the chain. If you lock the contract, then it stores a, a variable uh, called previous owner. And it's, it stores that as whatever the previous owner was. So then uh, when you go to unlock the contract, it switches uh, the owner back to previous owner because it has that stored in, in its variable. So if you just do that, if you lock and unlock the contract and then uh, renounce ownership, all they have to do again, anybody really, uh, or no, sorry, it would be the original deployer because it's the only owner con uh, function. Uh, so it, it, or is it only owner? But anyways, basically a few steps that they could take, uh, lock it, unlock it, renounce ownership, unlock it again, and they have ownership again. So for the ones that do renounce the ownership, if they went through that those steps, uh, which we did not, and we can look at the... Uh, transaction history to show if uh, anyone wants to look at it. Uh, if they went through those steps, renounce the ownership, one day they could still regain ownership, do whatever they want. And uh, yeah. So I'm gonna ask you, Ryan, could you jot that down on the list of things that you will be including in V2 of the dashboard for yeah. um, yes. the scores that we're gonna be giving to other coins? Because that is huge. That is huge, yes, and it, yeah, that's uh, just basically I just searched for a few different transactions uh, that that's on the list too. It's you know there's more and more things that I'm discovering that need to be covered uh, because there's just I mean it's so complicated. And there's so much, so many ways things can go wrong. Okay, I was looking something up a second ago and I forgot totally forgot what it was, but. Uh, yeah, so somebody just asked, I have a question. Why would they include it in the contract if it devalues the price? I really don't understand. Oh, right. I, neg me. Uh, right. we, so to get back to that previous point. Right. I, I just answered that. Basically, I don't think that they understood it either. So. You don't, you, Ryan, you're too nice. You don't ever want to uh, attribute well, I, nefarious, I don't know, nefarious man. activities. I, I don't know. Everyone's just people and people make mistakes and, you know. I didn't know that the vulnerability of that lock unlock thing, I didn't see that. I didn't know that was in there. I didn't see it until I read through the Certic thing. I didn't go through those functions. Um, so, you know, we're not vulnerable to that after we renounce the ownership. But, you know, 
this this is things very complicated. There's a lot of different factors. You know, people make mistakes, so I'm not going to say that people are intentionally doing something, uh, you know, to rob people or, you know, or if they're intentionally lying or if they just didn't know. I don't, I don't know. I can't say. But when the information starts coming out and they do know, you know, not doing anything about it afterwards and still continuing saying the same message. That's... Right. At some point, you can only ride your uh, 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 reasonable, plausible deniability. What do you call it? Plausible deniability. You can only ride your plausible deniability so far until it doesn't work anymore. And I think we're at that point with uh, most of these. Right. Yeah, and I don't know why Surtec called that a minor bug. Seems pretty significant, doesn't it? <laughs> right. Renouncing yeah. the ownership and being able to get it back. I, uh, I'm excited for, uh, I know, I think eventually, I mean, we've, we've, we went back and forth a lot on whether do we want to get an audit or do we not want to get an audit. I, um, I think we still should definitely because it's complicated. It is. And if there's a mistake in there that I hadn't, you know, that I didn't see. Right. It'd be didn't messy. know about like this thing. It would be messy, but I would want to know, you know. Yeah. I, yeah. And plus, I think it means a lot to people and who knows what it would uncover. And I think it'd be valuable to be able to one to one compare it too to other tokens and say, you know, this, we right. don't do this. And Which I know proof. that there's, there's some functions in there that are definitely going to get a bad score uh, because I put a uh, function in there to withdraw funds. But that was only put in there in case someone accidentally sent money into it and they made a huge mistake and I wanted to be able to refund their money. Uh, but, you know, we did renounce the ownership and in a way that we're not uh, vulnerable to that exploit. So, you know, that function is not even going to, you know, can't even be used anymore. But yeah, generally that gives you a bad score because if you can pull tokens from the contract and the contract has a function where it's supposed to receive tokens, um, then, you know, somebody can just steal tokens out of the contract. The owner can. Yeah. But you need both of those things to exist at the same time. All right. What about this? Um, oh, where'd it go? We're scrolling too fast. It, uh, I have another question. What... LP tokens are given by swap and how do they affect the price? Uh, so the LP tokens, basically when you go to the pancake swap interface, the next tab over is liquidity and you can add liquidity. And what you're adding is an equal value of US dollars, uh, basically uh, in uh, the two tokens that are in the liquidity pool. And then you receive in exchange for that, something called an LP token, a liquidity pool token. And you get back uh, an, your original investment um, when you put those back in there. But basically, you just have to have the LP tokens in your wallet that represent that you've added value to the liquidity pool. Uh, and then that's how you uh, access the advanced part of the web page. Uh, but basically, how does that affect the price? Well, what it does is it brings up the total amount of reserves in the liquidity pool that covers the market cap. And that's so by staking liquidity, you're increasing the price of all the other tokens you hold because you're putting more BNB into the liquidity pool, which drives up that ratio. Well, no, because you're adding it in a way that doesn't change the price. You're adding it in equal uh, so that the quantities values are equal. So by doing that, you're not actually changing the price of the token at all. You're just uh, strengthening its resistance to fluctuate, basically. Right, so the price is stable, but your your delta on it, right? It's like a delta chain so is going so, to be more minimal at, with withdrawals, with other people's withdrawals. Basically, the more balanced liquidity that's in the pool, that gets added to the pool, the less of an effect large sells and buys and swaps have on the price. Uh, what else do we got oh, some, here? Somebody had asked earlier in one of the chats that I saw, I didn't get back to it. They said, uh, so what exactly is the Twitter bot looking for? Can it monitor anything? What kind of things can it predict for? So we're looking, it's looking for a very specific function called um, uh, swap and liquefy that's built into the Mooncoin contracts. And that is the function that basically dumps the tokens into the liquidity pool, lopsided, bringing the price down. So if the contract has that in it then it can be added um, and those are the ones that we've been monitoring 
And it's just a literally a number that builds up and builds up and builds up until it reaches a certain threshold and then it does the dump. So you just watch for that number to be reached and that number varies token to token. So you just have it programmed in for each token. Right. Right. Uh, here's uh, that Surtech thing with the lock thing. It's, uh, I was just double checking, making sure I said it right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this guy wants to know, can anyone with enough capital do a rug pool? rug pull or any coin or only the owner of the coin yeah so can anybody pull the rug or only the owner so it depends it requires having a substantial amount of tokens that you can trade all at once so in the moon coins where the developers hold the liquidity pool tokens after liquidity is added then yes they hold in some cases more than half of all the liquidity pool tokens and what they're able to do is swap those out pull out you know, a substantial amount of the token and the paired uh, established value token, which is BNB in this case, they're able to pull that all out and then they can take the half that was the token and immediately swap it back out for basically whatever is left in there. And, it's, you know, it happens real quick. It's just it can be done in a couple transactions in a few seconds. Yeah, so it's dependent upon yeah. the strength of the liquidity right. pool, but, and and just you don't want somebody owning fifty percent of your token either, right? right. Like that's yeah, right. Which, uh, which you know, as uh, the pre-sales, you know, usually you have people that hold one to two percent of the total amount of tokens, and then as people start selling, it starts going down, and you know, getting getting less and less uh, percentages and you know portions. So a people. huge thing to look for is if the if the you know contract deployer is retaining 25 30 40 50 percent of the tokens somewhere it doesn't matter where right they can call it whatever they want if they call it a marketing wallet if they if they call it a whatever right right it, which we do have bad. we do have yeah and we do have a marketing wallet that we just set aside with a two percent originally um but it's gaining reflection so we'll probably end up burning burning those and you know if people yeah we're gonna start people, spending that soon though. yeah and if people you know think that there's too much in the marketing wallet you know we'll spend it and i, I log all the transactions on it or sorry we won't spend it we'll we'll burn some of it uh, but and i log all the transactions on there so if you go on bsc scan whenever there's a transaction that happens on that wallet uh you know i, I put in what it's for so there's only been a handful of things at this point that we've actually um you know spent any of that on for marketing or uh different things but you know we're going to start tapping into that once the dashboard goes up and actually start marketing the dashboard. Right, because I think we talked about this on our little solo AMA follow-up, but we don't want to start tapping that liquidity pool since we don't want we don't want to drive a bunch of traffic in. We don't want to drive a huge amount of people in looking for a quick pump uh, who are going to maybe buy it or look at it and leave. We want them to come in, find something worthwhile and stick around. So we don't want to devote funds to getting new eyes on this uh, except for organically like we have been until we have something that's going to hold them here. Yeah, right. Exactly. Because people come and they're like, you know, what's the value of the token? What does it do? Well, I'm trying yeah. to make something so that it does something because... And see, this is not... where you're downplaying yourself again because you already have a sweet dashboard. It's already a pretty cool dashboard. <laughs> oh, the beta, the beta is pretty cool. Yeah, it's slow though. You know, it's just slow. It's in, yeah. There's no custom coins. It doesn't load the custom coins in your wallet. There's no pictures of the logos for the coins. <laughs> there's no <laughs> animated graphs. <laughs> yeah. uh, you've, brought, you've brought a lot more to the table already than 99% <laughs> of all these others. So, uh, good job. I'm Batman, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what else do we got here? Let's see. Somebody called uh, me Robin if you're Batman. I don't think that's a question exactly. <laughs> More of a statement of fact, I suppose. Uh, what does it mean by swap and liquid? This is a good question. What does it mean by swap and liquefy enabled function? Uh, yes. So basically, that swap and liquefy, whenever you hear um, these different tokens advertising automatic liquidity and you know we're adding liquidity to the pool so what that is it's a series of functions that waits for the contract to uh well, let me go back one more step so there's two fees that are attributed on most of these transactions for these kinds of coins um usually half the fee it goes back to the token holders as a reward and the other half of the fee is for adding liquidity and i put that in quotes because 
what they're doing is they're waiting until a certain number is in the contract from the fee, collecting from the fee, and then they take the entire amount and they swap half of it with the uh, into the liquidity pool and they get B and B back in this case. So then now they're holding, um, you know, half tokens that are B and B and half of the tokens are the original tokens, and then they put them both back into the pool. And that transaction right there, just that last one, is balanced. You're putting two equal value amounts into the pool. But because they took the tokens and swapped them for the BNB and then just put that same BNB right back in there, in the end, the net result is only adding the one token. They're not actually adding value, they're adding quantity. And then those liquidity pool tokens from there, by default, go back to the contract owner. So in an unlocked uh, or in a uh, contract that does not have revoked ownership, those are going back to whoever deployed it, and that's a developer's private wallet. So unless it was deployed by another smart contract that has functions in there and it's a multi-step thing, which I'm not seeing any of these that are because that's a more complicated thing and it looks like most of these people don't actually understand you know, the code and these kind of things. Um, uh, my brain did a thing. It just happens sometimes at night. It's, you know, it's only 10, you, uh, 30. You said, uh, you said <laughs> they, um, they add quantity, but not value. Correct. Yeah. So that first step, which I think is a great quick summarization of the primary issue here. Right. Because the value in the pool is represented by the established token, not the new token. It's represented by BNB in this case, because I keep saying that, but uh, you know, depending on the chain that you're on and the one that you establish it with. Um, so, so yeah, you're adding more of one token and that token is only worth as much as the ratio in there says that it's worth. So even though you're adding more of the token and the to token is worth X amount, as you're adding it, it is decreasing in value at the exact same amount that you're putting it in. So in the end, there's no extra, there's no extra value. There's just extra tokens that are worth less money each. Did I lose you, John? Are you still there? Oh, I had myself muted. I was just trying to talk to you. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. Gotcha. Yeah, so you said something about contract ownership being renounced and how that factors in. So if they've renounced contract ownership, this is not a risk at all? Or it's, um, it's still happening, though, right? It's, it's still happening. Uh, the tokens are still being dumped into the liquidity pool. The value is still going down, but then the tokens are generally sent to a burn address. So it's an address that... Uh, it usually starts with a bunch of zeros, and it's something that there's no private keys for that have been discovered so that nobody actually has control over it so that those liquidity pool tokens can never remove value from the pool in the end of the day. Uh, but when they're being held by a private wallet and it accumulates at a point, you know, that gets, I mean, they, some of them have more than half of the liquidity pool tokens. They can just swap it all back out. Right. So just because the contract has been renounced, ownership has been renounced, it does not mean that this is not a concern. Especially since now there's this new vulnerability that can give you back ownership of the contract, even if it's been renounced. I mean, the way that this code is written in these contracts, I want to say, if your goal is to scam people, it's brilliant. Because there are so many functions in there that are so complicated and so many things that can go wrong and so many ways to exploit it if you're the contract owner that, I mean, it's it, it's done in a way that allows any type of scamming that anyone wants to do. <laughs> it's really bad. But that's, you know, but it checks out on the security reports usually, and it's, you know, gets people hyped. It does get but, people hyped. Yeah, but... Uh, the, people are uh, asking about... We've got, I gutted all that stuff out of this contract, which the code's on the GitHub and uh, val uh, validated, verified on BSC scan if anyone wants to look at it. So those functions, they're, they're just not even in there. They don't exist at all. And our burning on transactions is actually, it's an internal transaction that handles uh, sending the burns to a burn wallet, and it does it on every single transaction. And you guys may not see, if you look at the, the token holders on BSC scan, you may not see the burn address being updated or like some of the wallets receiving reflections or anything, but they won't be changing, right? And so the way BSC scan works is just to 
you know, a, a flaw or whatever in, right. their, in their website where it does not update as the reflections of the burns come in until an actual transaction occurs in those wallets. So you just need like every once in a while, Ryan regularly sends like one um, not safe moon token to the burn wallet and that triggers an update of the total balance of the burn wallet. And that's the same with all of the other holders. They just need to complete a transaction and then it'll be updated with all of their reflection. Right, right. Because the the contract is updating it and keeping track of it, but it doesn't actually send out the new balance until uh, there's a function that asks the contract uh, what's the balance, you know, and then at that point, the databases that that uh, add up the numbers in that method will update what they're displaying. So, and then we're, we're going to be asking the contracts what the balance is because that's a more accurate up-to-date way. And that's, yeah. that's how mine pulls it up. Um, back to the liquidity tokens. I think um, there was something else I wanted to follow up about that with. Is there a value to your liquidity pool token after you stake it? Is there a secondary market for those? Is there, what can you do it? What do you do with it? Um, yeah, so there's, uh, you won't see a value show up on a BSC scan or anything like that. Usually we'll just say like pancake payer token or LP token, uh, but there is a value to it. So pancake swap will have uh, their farming and there's different things that different, different uh, platforms will do to basically, if you redeposit those tokens, then they'll give you different rewards for them. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of different ways that people can receive value back from them. There's a, but at, at this point, we're just going to say to, yeah, AKA farming, somebody said. Right. Uh, yeah, exactly. Say yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> AKA. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Uh, are deflationary tokens the future of crypto? Well, there hasn't been any that uh, are truly deflationary yet, except for ours except that I found. For, except for. Except for not SafeMoon, which is not that. It's something else, you know. But there's, uh, yeah, so I would say that not yet. But the dream, you know, everyone's buying the dream. But since you're sending the same tokens back to the liquidity pools rewards that you are giving to everybody else, it's not actually doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what happens specifically to, yeah, so I mean, we talked, let's, we could retouch on this one more time since we talked about this in the beginning and then kind of got off topic uh, with Fairmoon specifically. But just again, like what happened with Fairmoon exactly, just real, real briefly in Super Layman's terms. Uh, so today, the contract owner of the version two Fairmoon token, which is War on Rugs, that, that Twitter account, they handled one transaction and they pulled out. Over 1,300 BNB from the pool, left leaving 270 something in there, dropping the price from 0.6 cents to 0.1 cents, and pulling out over half a million dollars in BNB to a privately owned, privately held developer wallet. And then they deleted their Twitter account and probably are disappearing from the face of the earth. Now, is only Fairmoon susceptible to this sort of thing happening, or could another token drop by 80% all of a sudden out of nowhere at any time? It, yeah, it just depends on how strong the liquidity pool is, how many tokens uh, somebody has that they're swapping in. So there's a lot of factors that can contribute to it. But there's a lot of them that the issues exist with. Right. So the extremity of the pull is going to vary based on those factors you just said, but the possibility of it exists uh, almost uniformly everywhere. Maybe it's only a 50% drop. Maybe it's a 30% drop. Maybe it's a 90% drop. Yeah, maybe it's 10, maybe it's 20. It just depends on how many tokens somebody is putting in there all at once. Okay. And this is not, again, this is not just a, a big holder liquidating, right? This is different because a big holder liquidating is a whole separate separate situation. Exactly, yeah. When it's the, when it's the person that actually deployed the original contract that ends up doing this, I mean, that... That's the definition of a rug pull. So, but I guess the number one way to try to convince people that things are safe and not rug pulley is to say that that's not you. You know, everything's safe. You're going to make money um, fast. You're going to uh, the moon. Oh, you're going to go farther. You're going to Mars. Oh, you're going farther. You're going to a galaxy. Oh, you're going farther. You're going to stars. <laughs> <laughs> uh we're not getting any more questions um no. what tell me about that thing with the joystick behind you 
the hell's that? Oh, this thing? Oh, it's this little arcade that I built. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's got a Raspberry Pi in it and just a bunch of old school arcade games. And, you know, I, I never finished painting it and, or anything, but, yeah. I'm a, I like to build things. I'm a big nerd. 3D printer behind it. and. I hope you finish that someday. It's sweet. The, well, it works. It just, you know, I haven't painted it or done any cool graphics to it or anything. Can you 3D print? This guy wants to know. Can you 3D print? Uh, can you 3D print a not safe moon token? And I'd like to add to his question. I'd like you to 3D print a not safe moon token, and then take a picture of it, and then sell it as an NFT. You know what you could do? Destroy actually, destroy the token. I, I've thought about this, and you could. What you could do is you could put the address as a QR code, and you could 3D print it in different colors. And yeah, you could. You could absolutely do it. You could 3D print. You could absolutely. All right, I think we got a potential buyer here for us. So <laughs> maybe we'll get on that next. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, this guy wants to know cremation can so can Safe Moon LP be pulled? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean it can be pulled. In a how sense. big? How how much would be pulled? How big? Because we saw the we saw the Fair Moon drop was eighty percent. Is it that significant? Like what's what's? I mean, any risk is bad, right? But is it how bad is it? I will tell you the exact data right now. Oh, okay. So they did something where they got rid of some of them recently. Let's see what they did. I don't know. We got live research happening. I right got a now. graph. I got a graph. We got live graphs. Pull it up on our screen. I'm pulling it up. I'm pulling it yeah, up. Yeah, let's see how this works. So I want to see behind the uh, behind the curtain here. This is my second time using the streaming software here. So, you know, bear with me. This will get smoother. This is this is days smoother than before, obviously, and it'll keep doing that. So, oh, my dog's knocking at the door. Mm -hmm. Oh, go away, you. Uh oh, don't actually accidentally autofill your home address. Oh yeah, when we were doing the. Uh, the uh, AMA yesterday, and I clicked one of the boxes to put a token address in, and it popped up with my home address. I had to, I had to blur it out. So that that's why it's taking me a second because I don't want to, especially since this is live. You know, I just want to. Uh, I mean, if someone really wanted to figure it out, I'm sure they could. But somebody's gonna come steal your uh, video game machine. Yeah. Okay. So here is. Safe Moon's liquidity pool tokens that the owner is holding. So this is one of the Safe Moon dev wallets, and this is where those automatic liquidity pool tokens are going. And this first, this first, uh, so basically this is them accumulating the tokens every day. And then this dump right, oh, you can't see that, can you? I'm gonna bring it up yeah, a little bit. Down. There you go. Uh, so yeah, this is them accumulating tokens every day. And this first drop right here was when War on Rugs, after I, I sent War on Rugs a bunch of tweets all day of what was going on, and they never, you know, officially said it, that they, they never acknowledged that I was sending them anything or that I said anything, probably because the Twitter bot was also talking about their token. But yeah, so it was the same day that War on Rugs put up that scam alert, and then, um, you know, this huge drop happened, and that was them locking up a bunch of liquidity pool tokens for four years. But since then, they've had a bunch more, and this drop right here, I didn't look and see where those ones have gone yet because i just uh just saw that that was uh, just a couple days ago but yeah if you look at the um total amount of tokens i'm a token holder in the graph. So the top 100 holders collectively own 99.9% .9 of the liquidity pool tokens and this graph did not come out at all. Yeah, what the hell yeah, is that? Yeah, I don't know. So here we go. This guy's got 50%. That is the one of their lockers. That's another locker. And the safe moon owner, okay, so they have 9% or 8.5% of the liquidity pool tokens right now. But that's actually a fairly small amount than what they usually have, because as you saw from that graph, they had just uh, got rid of a lot of them, which I don't know if they were locked for four years or what. But yeah, so pretty substantial amount, pretty substantial. 
Right. So then they continue to accumulate those and do pulls of them too, right? So it's gonna right. Yeah. Uh, so the answer to that question, though, in short, was uh, yes. Yes, it can happen to safe moon. Isn't this cool how he labels the uh, the different wallets? Oh yeah, because it's so obscure. I mean, it's weird. So once I figure out a wallet, I label it. So if I see it in a list somewhere, I know what it what it was. So yeah, just uh. Huh. Uh, this guy says blue life, or blue for life. That's a. Uh, from what I understand, fair had LP locked. What you're saying is regardless of also the lock, so you know what maybe that maybe the leftover lp tokens or lp that was in there maybe that was just what was locked up that's the locked for that's the locked portion yeah I think that answered the question yeah. yeah oh yeah right so when they lock the lp they lock the initial lp right they're not locking all future lp they're just locking the initial so they probably launched with 200 200 bnb in there see. yeah i mean i can i can see right here damn blue for life 90 that might be the question of the night <laughs> So, so did they have their contract ownership renounced at some point? Because they don't right now. Okay, so do they have... So there's um, one wallet with 99% of the liquidity pool tokens. So those are all the locked tokens, pretty much. Wow. That's bad. So there's, yeah, so... So, so say, say that again? Sorry, there's 99.3% of the liquidity pool tokens are in their locker. So that represents 99.3% of the Fair Moon and the BNB that is left in the liquidity pool. So they pulled all of it out except for 0.7 percent that's huge i mean they pulled out all the bnb there's yeah i mean there's well the, these are lp tokens though so that so that was wrong what i just said that that's not how that but yeah they're, they they 99.3 percent of the tokens in there are locked and can't come out they pulled out almost all of them that they could possibly pull out Right, so they they dumped everything except for the original locked LP, and that was a rounding error. Gosh, that sucks, man. That's rough. I feel I feel <laughs> that, bad for that people. Explains man. It, though. Seriously, <laughs> I feel bad for people. Yeah. People put a lot of money into this stuff. Why would you leave two hundred though? That's the only logical that's, answer. That's the so reason that's they left two hundred. Yeah, I, I feel I feel so much better about the whole thing. It's because they're locked. So yeah, I mean, god damn. So that means that the only ones that are in there that are unlocked still of the, what was the exact number? 278, so only 0.7 of those are unlocked. So 278. Yeah, so there's only 1.9 liquidity pool tokens left in their pool that are unlocked. But why leave 1.9? Well, because those were put in, those were put in. Now this is, hey, this is another reason though, uh, that it's good to add liquidity to the pool because it spreads out who is in control of the liquidity pool tokens. So even though you're adding your, if you add liquidity to the pool in a balanced way and the price doubles, you're going to lose a little bit through impermanent loss. That's true. But what's also happening is you're decentralizing who controls the liquidity pool tokens. So at this point, we've only had a few people that have added additional balanced liquidity to our pool, which, you know, it's not something that a lot of people really understand or want to do most of the time. Um, so right now, almost all of the liquidity pool tokens that exist for the not safe moon liquidity pool, they are in the locked contract. And we have a 20 year lock on that. Um, and, you know, it's in 20 years. I could pull them out if no one had added any more because you know I would have control of them because uh, it's the marketing wallet that is the owner of those liquidity pool tokens in 20 years. So yeah, so that's another great reason that people should want to put a little bit into the liquidity pool just because it decentralizes the ownership of the pool. So even if it does end up costing a little bit, if the price doubles, triples, or whatever, you know it's it 
helps in the long run because it create the, creates a situation that is harder to pull the rug. Yeah, so as he just says, somebody says, so right, so the lock, so our original LP is locked for 20 years. 20. We can't touch it until 20 years has passed. Correct. Two zero years, right. So Correct. Um, and I'm probably not going to. And the reason I did that, I'm, I'm like 35. I'm almost 35. I figured I'd be 55. And uh, at that point, I figured there'd be a lot more liquidity pool tokens in there. And there'd be some retirement if I wanted it. I don't know. But it's, you know, it's silly. <laughs> it is silly. But it's like, hey. <laughs> I mean, that was that was my little thought behind it, but really, uh, I, I so this is this I is a I long locked con. It. I mean, I just admitted it. Yeah, I know, but I could have oh, locked it for longer. Long but really, I wouldn't do that if it destroyed it because that was not the point of it. And I knew I figured that by that time there would be, you know, it would be distributed. The liquidity would be but distributed. What 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 about so yeah? But uh, Fairmoon did not pull their locked LP, right? Why can't you pull the locked or the other LP? Uh, because it's actually sitting in a in the DX swap or DX sale locker contract, so they're holding it, and that's a lock. That's a contract that you know I can't touch. I can't do anything with. And after the certain amount of time, it unlocks, and then I can retrieve those liquidity pool tokens uh, from there. Yeah, but what about other liquidity that we as our liquidity pool grows? We're not, it's only going to be growing through other people putting it in and they're in control of those liquidity tokens. So you can't touch them. You can't right. do anything like what just happened with Fairmoon. There's right. not well, all this extra that you're in control of. Right, right. Well, they, uh, yeah, right. It's, it's so complicated, man. It's, <laughs> you know, gosh. Uh, <laughs> what else we got? But yeah, so there's just not there's not that risk though. I just want to yeah, you know, let's let's, right. let's state that there's not that risk that something we could pull that um, excess liquidity over what was initially locked. Right, right. Yeah, it would just be the representation of what the pool is when you know the. But it it does grow because it's a percentage of the tokens that are in there, which it is you know, almost all of them. Um, there's only been a little bit added. But. Yeah, is this a fake stream or am I? What did I say? Why, why does it seem fake? This is only my second time streaming, but you know, I'll answer your questions if you if you have some. Yeah, dude. I mean, oh, it got deleted already. Dang. Did no, I do that? Said, oh, I did that. Yeah. Did you do that? I'm. You're the only one as a moderator. Oh, I right clicked on it, and then I must. Act, oh, dang it! I didn't mean to do that. I don't even know what <laughs> fake would be if this is fake. Like, uh, what the hell yeah, is real? This is a real one. I mean, I'm wearing headphones. I got a microphone. Uh. You know, there's charts. You got your sweet Zoom background in there uh, of your, of your uh, workspace. Yeah. Uh, so, no, someone is moderating. Not sure who. Uh, I, I, I think I might have done it on accident, to tell you the truth, because I right-clicked on it, and then I was like, "Is this what's this guy doing? But Locked the stream for 20 years. <laughs> okay, it's locked. <laughs> That was frozen in time. Uh, this guy wants to know if you said if he sends a contract that was a rug pull from a couple days ago, would you be able to tell it was going to happen? So we never know when it's going to happen. All we can say is that the possibility is there for it to happen. So right. So we can't say it's going to happen tomorrow. Right. But if the possi possibility exists, you know that's what we're looking for. We don't know when somebody's tr we don't know what someone's true intentions are. We don't know what somebody, uh, you know, really wants to do with it. And all we know for sure is what the code says it can do and where the things actually are. And that's why that's been my focus on everything. And, you know, I will, I will look and see how things are being advertised sometimes with people. But, you know, I, I, I don't call them out on their intentions and things because I don't truly know what they are. I just look at what's happening and what can happen and talk about that. Thank you, Boom Poodle, for saying that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we should probably wrap this up. It's been a little over, a little over an hour. And I think John actually might get kicked off because uh, he's talking to me through a Zoom. And I think, did we have an hour limit? Are you still there? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm still, still working, so <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm not yeah. sure. But let's wrap this up, and uh, we'll, we'll just throw this on YouTube right now so other people can look at it. And I don't think there's anything that I need to edit, so we'll just leave it like this, and I'll throw it up right now. Uh, but thanks Sweet. for thanks for everyone coming in. Got up to seventy three people looking. That's it's so this is this is so exciting, so new. 
<laughs> All right, man. All right, we'll, guys. we'll let you uh we'll let you get back to coding. Adios. Doing this. All right. See ya.